The famous law of governance, by Sultan Mehmed the Conqueror stated that, any of my sons, who ascends the throne, it is acceptable for him, to kill his brothers for the common benefit of the people. The majority of the ulama have approved this, let action be taken accordingly. This law also known as Fatih's law, was issued in order to prevent sibling quarrels, and the disintegration of the empire. Due to this law, many princes lost their lives. Not only the princes, but the sultans even did not hesitate to kill their own sons when necessary in order to protect their reign. The best known example of this, is Suleiman the Magnificent and the execution of his son, Shah Zadi Mustafa. There is another similar event in the history of the Ottoman Empire, and that is the story of Shah Zadi Mahmud. So today in this video, you'll get to know about an Ottoman prince, who was murdered by his father, because of his courage and valor. But before going further, it's our humble request to the viewers to subscribe to the channel, and do like and share the video. A few clicks of yours will not cost you anything, but it will motivate us, and help our channel to grow. We really appreciate and regard your support. And please, give your feedback in the comments section below. In the year 1587, Sultan Murad III was sitting on the Ottoman throne. Although Murad III had more than 100 children, out of which nearly half died of natural causes at a very young age. The eldest son of Sultan Murad III was Mehmed, with his consort Safiye Sultan, and he was the crown prince at that time. For this reason, Prince Mehmed was sent to Manisa to gain experience in his princely state. The hero of our event, Shah Saidi Mahmud was born here in Manisa Palace in 1587, while his father was still a prince. His mother was Halima Sultan. Since he was the first son of Mehmed III, Shah Saidi Mahmud was brought up carefully, and got a very good education. He spent time with his father in Manisa until the age of eight. When the calendars showed the date of the 16th of January 1595, a letter came from Safiye Sultan, the mother of Mehmed III. In the letter, it had been said that his father Murad III died, and he should come to Istanbul immediately to ascend the throne. Shah Saidi Mahmud also came with his father, and continued his education in Istanbul. As we said at the beginning, the deceased Sultan Murad III had many children, and of course, every son was considered a rival for the throne. But as Mehmed entered in Istanbul in a short time, he made his mark in the history as the 13th Sultan, who ascended the Ottoman throne. When he took the throne, he had 49 siblings, 19 boys and 30 girls. Since the girls did not pose a danger to the Sultanate, their lives were spared. Shah Saidi Mehmed ascended the throne as Mehmed III. And after ascending the throne, he first ordered the execution of his 19 half-brothers. So, all of his 19 brothers were killed in the middle of the night, for the common benefit of the people. While all this was going on, Shah Zaidi Mahmud also witnessed what happened next to his Sultan father. In his early years, Mehmed III was involved in the major state affairs, and even for the first time after Suleiman the Magnificent, he became the first Sultan, who went on an expedition against Austria in 1595, as the head of the army. But this was his first and last expedition. After the expedition, his interest in state affairs decreased. In fact, an important factor in this was Safiye Sultan. Because as Valade Sultan, she was in a position to rule the state, which gathered all the power in her hands in the absence of Sultan. It is said that, even a bird could not fly in Istanbul without her permission. 
all state appointments, including viziers, and Sheikh ul Islam positions, were made by her. Although the Sultan was Mehmed III, but she in actual ruled the empire in the background. Sophia Sultan was one of the women who left their mark in the Ottoman history. Unlike his father, Shah Saidi Mahmud was very interested in state administration. Despite his young age, he exchanged ideas with all viziers and statesmen, attended council meetings, and visited the Janissary Corps frequently. He was a prince with leadership qualities and ideas interested in military matters. For this reason, both in the state and in the army, Shah Zaidi Mahmud began to stand out as the Sultan of the future, where great hopes were fed. At that time, when there was a constant state of war with Austria, he frequently expressed to his father, Mehmed III, that he wanted to the head the army when an expedition was organized, and that the soldiers wanted to see the Sultans as the head of the expedition. However, the Sultan did not say anything about to go on an expedition again. In the early 1600, the Austrian front stopped, but this time the Jalali rebellion in Anatolia broke out. Although Sultan Mehmed III sent his different viziers to Anatolia, as the heads to dismiss the rebellion, but none of them succeeded in suppressing the revolts completely. Prince Mahmud was preparing to go to Manisa Sanjak at that time. However, with a brave move, he went before his father, and asked him to let me go to Anatolia as commander. You will see that I will defeat the rebels in a short time. He also demanded his father to give him an army for that. Although this courage of his son was something to be proud of for a father, but for a sultan, this courage of Shah Zaidi Mahmud intimidated his father, combined with the thought that he could overthrow him. On top of this incident, the correspondent of Shah Zaidi Mahmud's mother was caught. Shah Zaidi Mahmud's mother Halima Sultan, wrote to a dervish, asking him what he saw about her son's future. In response to her, the dervish wrote that Sultan Mehmed III would die in six months, his son would pass to the throne, and he would become a great Sultan. However, these correspondences were caught and delivered to Sophia Sultan, who had control everywhere in the palace. Of course, if Mehmed III lost his throne, Sophia Sultan would also lose her powers and title of Valide Sultan, and she would probably be exiled to the old palace. Therefore, Sophia Sultan started to provoke Sultan Mehmed III against his son, Shah Zaidi Mahmud. So, when the prince's request for the army to suppress the rebels, and this letter of dervish came one after the other, Sophia Sultan managed to deceive the Sultan by saying, that if Mahmud suppresses the rebellion and returned, the people will make him the Sultan, and this will be your end. Sultan Mehmed III, who did not hesitate to murder his 19 brothers when he ascended the throne, did not hesitate to order the death of his own son in order to protect his throne. Although Shah Zaidi Mahmud was not guilty of any crime, he was strangled by four deaf mute executioners on 7 June 1603, at the age of 15 or 16. There are two different rumors about the death of Shah Zaidi Mahmud. The first is that, on a night in June 1603, the executioners were sent to his room while the prince was sleeping. Sultan Mehmed III waited outside the room, and when the executioners had carried out his order, he entered the room to make sure that his son died. Other followers of Shah Zaidi Mahmud who were supposed to be involved in the event, were also thrown into the sea. The second which is mentioned by some historians is that, the prince was tortured in prison for two days for questioning, because they thought that he was planning a rebellion, and later he was executed. In addition, it is said that about 30 of Halima Sultan's maid servants were put in sacks and thrown into the Bosphorus alive, and by the end of June, she was sent to the old palace. After his death, Shah Zaidi Mahmud was remembered as an ambitious and courageous prince. He was very much loved by the Janissaries and other statesmen. Strangely enough, 
As the dervish said, his father Sultan Mehmed III, died within six months after the death of Shah Zadi Mahmud, and the throne fell to his son and Mahmud's half-brother, Ahmed, who ascended the throne as Sultan Ahmed I. Sultan Ahmed I, who witnessed the murder of his father's 19 brothers and also his brother Shah Zadi Mahmud, ordered the abolishment of the fratricide system to stop this bloodshed. He replaced it with the ascension system of seniority, which means, any prince who would be a possible threat to the throne, will be imprisoned in the cages at the top Kapi Palace. And in this way, the Kafir system was born.